Hello, hello everybody. As you can see, I am live from the kitchen today. I'm trying to kind of stay, I'm trying to uh, kind of stay cornered right here because I don't want you guys to see that my Christmas tree is still up. So I'm just gonna stay right here. So welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the coding coach. Thank you again for joining me. As you already know, my first intro is telling you to go ahead um, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for all of the support that you guys been giving me. Um, thank you so much for following the Instagram channel. And if you don't know, the Instagram is at the coding coach underscore CPC. So that's the Instagram name. So today I am coming to you with the final top 10 ICD-10 document, uh, documentation or coding tips. So we'll start with number seven. And if you didn't um, catch the videos, make sure you go back and look at it. I have 10, uh, excuse me, I have tips one through three on one video, four through six on another video. And today is gonna be, um, today I'm gonna talk about tips seven through 10. So top 10 tip, Number seven, document severity of illness. So documentation needs to provide the extra level of detail for severity of illness in order to assign the most appropriate ICD-10 code, such as explaining if a condition is mild, if a condition is moderate, or if it's severe. So this documenting the severity of the illness when you're telling me how bad the illness is. For instance, identify the stage for conditions such as pressure, ulcers, and chronic kidney disease. This is important as certain stages of pressure ulcers and CKD can impact risk adjustment. So now when you're coding pressure ulcers, then you're gonna code the stages. You're not just gonna say, oh, they have a right shoulder ulcer and leave it at that. So you will code that, of course. Then you're gonna also make sure you code the stage. So that's what I'm talking about with this tip number seven, the severity. So when I'm coding things like pressure ulcers or CKD, which is chronic kidney disease, then I have to be specific and I have to clarify the severity of the disease or the condition. And if the severity is not documented in the encounter or is not documented in the physician's notes, then you're going to say it's unspecified or un, uh, it's going to be unspecified if, if you can't find it in the documentation. Um, pressure ulcers, uh, you're going to either use stage one through four, or you're going to use unspecified if it does not specify or if the doctor uh, or the physician, mid-level, whoever, if they document uh, documents that it's unstageable, then there's also a code for that. And you're gonna assign codes from pressure ulcers. You're gonna assign codes from L, as in Lima, Dollar Tree. You're gonna um, you're gonna assign codes from L eighty nine. Now, a lot of people, um, and I wrote some notes, of course, so I'm looking up, looking down. So a lot of people have this question. How many codes are required to code a pressure ulcer site and stage? So, and I'll give you, and, and this will give you a clear answer. Um, let's just say a patient is admitted to the hospital with uh, a pressure ulcer at stage one, and then it progresses to a higher stage, um, you know, a higher stage. So when it progresses to a higher stage during their stay, then you're going to need two separate codes uh, to be assigned. So one code is for the site and the stage of the ulcer upon admission. And then the second code is for the same ulcer site and the highest stage reported during the stay. So that's what I mean by documenting the severity. Is it moderate? Is it mild? Is it severe? What stage is this condition? You know, if there are different phases and stages to it. So it's the same with CKD or chronic kidney disease. Anytime that you see chronic kidney disease in a patient's chart, 
you've got to document um, the stage of the CKD. If it's stage one, two, three, four, five, or six. And when you get to stage six, which is N as in Nancy, 18.63, um, sometimes it may not say stage six in the chart. It may say end stage renal disease, ESRD. And you know automatically that's the final stage if it's end stage, uh, end stage, which is stage six. So if it's not documented in the encounter, make sure you use unspecified for CKD as well. Um, don't just leave it out because the, the, it's not specified as far as the severity. Unspecified, use that code. Tip number eight, document the episode of care, whether it's initial, subsequent, or sequela. Now, if you attended my ICD-10 Strengthen Your Knowledge workshop that I had a few weeks ago, then we definitely talked a lot about the seventh character um, of the A, the D, and the S. So documentation needs to specify the episode of care as this impacts the seventh character for ICD-10 code assignments of most categories in chapter 19, which is the injury, poisoning, and certain other consequences of external causes section of the book. So the most three common seventh character values are A. And A means the initial encounter for use when the patient is receiving active treatment for the first time, initial encounter. So D, D is the subsequent encounter for use after active treatment, receiving routine care, doing healing or recovery phase. So let's just say someone broke their shoulder and they're coming in for a follow-up visit. They've already had their initial visit. I'll use the A for the first time that they come in. For the follow-up or the subsequent visit, I'm going to use a D. So that means whatever code that I use for this visit, at the very last um, character, which is the seventh character, I am going to have an A, a D, or uh, essentially an S. The S is for sequela or for use um, of complications or conditions arising as a direct result of the condition. And let's just say it's been two years, I had a shoulder injury, as I just mentioned. And two years later, I'm coming back to the doctor because the same shoulder is bothering me and it's from this injury. So when a doctor see me and the coder applies or assigns the code, they're gonna put an S on the end of whatever code they use because this code or this uh, reason for the visit is sequela. Although this injury happened years ago, they're still having residual effects of this condition. So it's sequela. So again, tip number eight, make sure you doc, uh, document the episode of care. If it's their initial visit, is it the subsequent visit? Is it the sequela visit? Now, of course, you guys know that all of the chapters in the ICD-10 book does not require seventh characters. Of course, it's injuries, like I said, poisoning, and, uh, and certain consequences of external causes, like car accident, um, things like that. So remember, typically the most common, A for initial care, D for subsequent care, follow-up, and S for sequela. Tip number nine, sign, symptom, and unspecified codes may be appropriate to code. A lot of times people question me and ask me, hey, can I sign um, codes to signs and symptoms? And a lot of times people tell me not to code signs and symptoms. Yes, you can code signs and symptoms like fever, um, abdomen pain, um, cough. And you will code signs and symptoms when there is no definitive diagnosis. So if the physician or the mid-level, whoever, has not diagnosed this, diagnosed this patient with anything, then you, you don't have a diagnosis. So you have to code the signs and the symptoms. So tip number nine, per the ICD-10 guidelines, uh, while specific diagno diagnosis codes should be reported when they are supported by the available medical record documentation and clinical knowledge of the patient's health conditions. Now there are instances when signs and symptoms or unspecified codes are the best choices for accurately reflecting the healthcare encounter. 
basically saying in a nutshell, sometimes you're gonna have to code signs and symptoms and you're gonna use unspecified codes to capture what's going on with the patient. Each healthcare encounter should be coded to the level of certainty known for that encounter. Meaning, you cannot make up anything. You only can code what you can see. So again, each healthcare encounter should be coded to the level of certainty known for that encounter. Means only code what you know. When a definitive diagnosis is not established, it means the doctor is saying you have all these signs and all these symptoms, but they can't figure out what you have. So when a definitive diagnosis is not established, it's appropriate to code the sign and or symptoms. Last tip, tip number 10, reference the ICD-10 book. Always reference the book, um, not because you already know the code and oh, I don't need to reference the book, I already know the code for diabetes, type two is E1119. Always reference the book just to make sure there are no additional uh, rules or guidelines that you have to follow. So tip 10, reference the ICD-10 code book. Always reference this book as it contains the official guidelines for coding and reporting and the complete listing of valid diagnosis codes. Reliance on coding software, electronic health record systems, and cheat sheets alone can lead to coding errors. Now, of course, we all, if we're working in a different specialty um, and we've been working there for a while, we'll have a cheat sheet. When I worked at an OBGYN office, I had a cheat sheet. You know, um, everybody's coming in the office is getting the same thing done. So instead of me looking it up, you know, I had a cheat sheet, things like that. Well, it was a time where I used my cheat sheet and there was an additional guideline that I needed to use. So that lesson there taught me to always reference my ICD-10 code book just to make sure that there are not guidelines or anything like that that I'm missing and I'm not capturing. So again, top 10 ICD-10 tips. These are tips seven through 10. Please go back and reference the other two videos. Like I said, the other videos has tips, tips one through three, and then also tips four through six. Now this concludes my video. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having your uh, subscription to this channel. Thank you so much if you follow me on YouTube. Thank you so much if you follow us on Facebook. And I'll drop all of those um, links uh, at the bottom as far as Facebook and also Instagram just in case. Now the Instagram is lit. Now if you follow me on Instagram and you're looking at this video and you agree with me, drop a fire emoji. Because everybody who follows me on Instagram, the Instagram has all of the information. Um, I made sure that I have visuals on Instagram and along with the visuals, I have coding information under the visual pictures. So if you're not an Instagram follower, you need to get on over there because it's lit at the coding coach underscore CPC. Again, thanks so much for joining me for these top 10 tips, tips seven through 10. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and hit the um, subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.